Here is our review for your Unit 2A test. The very first thing that you're going to be doing is solving by factoring. As you're going through this, if you're working independently, you should look at the first problem, stop the video, try it on your own, and then check your answer, and then go to number two and do the same thing all the way through. It is by doing that that you will truly know if you understand how to do all the problems for your test. The first net problem is 3x squared minus x minus 10 equals 0. So again, you've probably paused it by now. You need to always be sure that everything is on one side of the equation. Set equal to 0 before you factor. This one is ready to go. My first term was prime. The only way I can get a 3x squared is with 3x times an x. The last term was negative. I knew the signs had to be different. And in searching for two numbers that would multiply to give me a negative 10, but inner and outer would combine to give me a negative 1, this is what I came up with through trial and error. Notice my outer terms are negative 6x, the inner term 5x, together that gives me a negative 1x. And if I multiply and get 0, then either 3x plus 5 had to equal 0. And when I solve, I get negative 5 thirds. Or x minus 2 had to equal 0. And when I solve, I add 2, and I get x equals 2 as my answer. All right. Number 2, 7x squared plus 17x equals negative 6. Again, you've had time to check number 1, pause your video, and see if you can work this one on your own. Hopefully, you remembered that you needed to add 6 to move it to the other side of the equation. This one is still fairly easy to factor because 7 is a prime number. My only option is a 7x times an x. All of the signs are positive, so everything's going to be positive. Then you try the different factors of 6, remembering that whatever you put out here is your outer term opposite that 7x is going to be multiplied by a 7x. So my outer terms here are 14x, the inner term is 3x, together I get 17x, and if I set those factors equal to 0 and solve, I would subtract 3 and divide by 7 and get negative 3 sevenths. For the second one, subtract 2 and get x equals a negative 2. Alright, so there's a couple of examples about solving by factoring. Next, you're going to write a quadratic equation when being given the solutions. So let me show you number three. Again, you're asked to write the quadratic equation for the solutions. Remember, equations have something on both sides of the equal sign. That's what makes it an equation. For number three, I have x equals negative two-thirds, and x equals a negative one. If you're seeing one here with a fraction, what do you think the chances are that you're going to see one with a fraction on your test? Yep, really good chances. Remember when you have a fraction, I said do it like you're just working backwards. The last thing you did was divide by 3 to get your solution. So going backwards, the first thing you do is multiply by 3. When you multiply by 3, you have 3x equals a negative 2. And you add 2 to move it over to the other side, and you end up with the factor 3x plus 2. For the second one, all I had to do was add 1 to move it over, and so my second factor is x plus 1. And at that point, you must multiply. You are not done 
until you finish multiplying it back together and write it in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. And if you are doing that and practicing it right now, then more than likely you'll do it right on your test and get full credit. Foiling and combining like terms, you should have 3x squared plus 5x plus 2 equals 0. Alright, number 4. Here are your solutions. x equals 3 fifths. x equals a negative 2. Try it on your own. For the first one, multiply both sides by 5, and then subtract that 3 and write it as a factor. For the second one, add 2 to write it back as a factor. And then multiply, combine like terms, and put it in standard form. And you should have 5x squared plus 7x minus 6 equals 0. That is the equation that goes with these solutions. Alright, moving on to the next topic. Next we solved and worked with inequalities. You're going to be asked to solve an inequality. You're going to be asked to graph the solution and then you are to write the solution in inequality notation. We're doing just one of these. I have x squared minus 5x minus 24 is greater than 0. Again, this one is in standard form. If it was not, you would put it in standard form first to get everything on one side and zero on the other. We started by factoring. Two numbers that multiply to give you a negative 24, but add to give you a negative 5, are a positive 3 and a negative 8. If you check those inner and outer terms and everything, we have it factored correctly. Now then, if you remember, we then took our factors, set them equal to zero, and solved. And we knew that on our number line, we had to put a circle at negative three and a circle at a positive eight. You have to be careful that I can clearly see if it, you intend it to be an open circle or a closed solid circle. If you put a squiggle in there and I can't tell which you mean, you're getting no credit. Now then you can go through the process that we did with the plus and minus signs for the positive and negative values. You can shade your number line based on what you know about the fact that it says the equation is greater. Or you can test points to see where to shade. Here's my negative 3, here's my positive 8. I wrote it on here the same way the book did. Remember, wherever your 0 is, any numerical value to the right of that is going to be a positive answer. Anything to the left is negative. Same thing for the other one. And down on this end, positive, I'm sorry, a negative times a negative would give you a positive solution and it would be greater than 0. That's why it's shaded. Positive times a positive a positive. That's why it's shaded. In the middle, the numerical value you would get when you put it into this inequality would be positive. In this one, it would be negative, which gives you a negative number. And a negative number is not greater than zero, it's less. Or you could test. If I put a zero in for x, the first term is zero, the second term is zero, negative 24 is not greater than zero. That's why the area containing zero is not part of the solution. When it is a split graph, your final inequality notation is written in two pieces. Over here, x is less than a negative three. Over here, eight is, x is greater than eight. 
So be sure that if it's split, you write it as two inequalities. If it had been this section between, you would have had x between these values in that compound inequality. <coughs> All right. The next section is when we were working on our complex numbers and our imaginary numbers. And the first thing you learned was how to rewrite in terms of i. And we're going to do three problems here, I believe. So problem number six. Square root of a negative 16. Find your final answer. You do not have to show how you got to the final answer on this because these are straightforward. If it helps you, I wrote the steps out. Remember, I rewrote it as the square root of 16 times the square root of a negative 1. And the square root of 16 is 4. And the square root of a negative 1 is i. You never leave a negative under a radical in your answer. It is an i value. Number 7. Square root of negative 75. See if you can find that answer. You do, you can start by separating those out because you know that square root of a negative one is going to be an I value. But 75 is not a perfect square, but it will simplify. If you do your factor tree, you will find that 75 is 5 times 5 times 3. Because there are two 5's, the 5 comes out of the radical. The 3 stays under the radical. And anything that comes out of the radical goes in front. So the square root of negative 1 is an i. So it's 5i square roots of 3. And the last one of these, number 8. Negative 4 plus the square root of a negative 45. Well, this is the real part of our answer. We just need to simplify the square root of negative 45. So to do that, you're going to have to factor out 45 and see if anything comes out of that radical. It's 5 times 9. 9 is 3 times 3, so I have the negative 4 plus 3 comes out of the radical, the square root of a negative 1 comes out as i, and the factor of 5 that was in there just one time remains in the radical. All right, moving on. The next thing we did with complex numbers was uh, we worked with operations. We started with add and subtract, so we're going to do one of each of those. The directions simply say evaluate the following expression. For number nine, I have my first complex number, 7 minus 3i, close parentheses, plus my second complex number, negative 2 plus 4i. Hopefully you already know the answer. When you add and subtract, you combine the real parts together, then you combine the imaginary parts together. Whoops, wrong problem. Going down. 7 plus a negative 2 is 5. Negative 3i plus a positive 4i is a positive 1i. 5 plus i is your final answer. <clears throat> okay, and just one subtraction problem. Your first complex number is 6 minus 2i, close parentheses, minus, open parentheses, 8 
minus 3i, close parentheses. Watch your signs on your subtraction. 6 minus 8 is a negative 2 for the real part of your answer. Negative 2i minus a negative 3i becomes plus 3i, and a negative 2 and a positive 3 gives you a positive 1i. Notice the directions don't tell you what operation. You have to watch the sign and realize you're adding here. Watch and realize you are subtracting here. And on number 11, what operation are they asking you to do? Yeah, they're asking you to multiply. There's no sign between the parentheses. It's just two binomials that happen to be complex sitting side by side waiting for you to FOIL. The first complex number is 4 plus 2i, and that is multiplied by 3 minus 5i. So again, if you're working on your own, get it copied down, but pause your video and see if you can get the answer on your own before you turn it back on. First, foiling. 4 times 3 is 12. Outer term. 4 times negative 5i is a negative 20i. Now going to the 2i for the inner term. 2i times 3 is 6i. And last, last times the last, positive 2i times a negative 5i is a negative 10i squared. You are not finished yet. The two terms in the middle are like. A negative 20 and a positive 6i is a negative 14i. But you must remember, or you will lose credit, you cannot leave an exponent on i. i squared equals a negative 1. Negative 1 times a negative 10 is a positive 10. So this term is now real. It needs to be combined with the real parts for a final answer of 22 minus 14i. Okay. And the last one is an operation with division. If I can get this to slide down here. You have 3 plus 2i over 4 minus 5i. Again, 3 plus 2i over 4 minus 5i. See if you know what your first step is before I show you. And if you know how to do the entire problem, do the entire problem. When you are dividing complex numbers in this fraction form, you have to get rid of the i in the denominator. To do that, we multiplied by the cl complex conjugate. The complex conjugate of the denominator looks exactly like the denominator, but the signs are opposite, and we did several of these. Hopefully, you did several on your own. So once you've decided what you need to multiply by, you multiply in the numerator foiling, you multiply in the denominator foiling, and simplify to get your final answer. There's plenty of opportunities for you to make a careless mistake, so don't get in a hurry. If you make a mistake, but I can tell that you chose the complex conjugate correctly, you're going to get some partial credit for that. If I see that you got started on multiplying and you did most of it, if not all of it correct, you're going to get some more credit for that. But I have seen students that miss this and they can't get credit for anything else because they got the complex conjugate incorrect. So be sure you can get that correct. And then using FOIL and remembering that I squared is a negative one, you should be able to combine terms and simplify. And you should have a final answer of two plus 23i over 41. Okay.
So again, first, outer, inner, last, combine those middle terms. If you got the correct complex conjugate, your denominator will become a real number. We had three in a row in our notes where that happened every single time. And that's when we first discovered complex conjugates. All right, moving on. We're getting close, we're getting there, we're more than halfway through. The next section, we're gonna solve the problems by taking square roots. And they'll even tell you how they want you to solve it. Remember, you can only solve by using the square root method if there is no x to the first term. You have a squared term and you have a constant term. Number 13, 25x squared minus 12 equals zero. First step, move that 12 over to the other side by adding it. Remember your first step is to isolate the part that is squared. I have to get rid of this 25. I need to divide both sides by 25. Now the part that is squared is by itself. Next you take the square root of both sides. When I take the square root on this side, it cancels out the square. When I take the square root on the other side, I have to remember it could be both positive or negative square root of 12 over 25. Well, this one's not too bad, but it does have some work that you have to do to simplify. X equals positive or negative. Remember, when you have a fraction under the radical, you're taking the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. In the numerator, if you factor it out completely, you'll have 2 times 2 times 3. So because there's two twos, that was what was squared. A 2 comes out of the radical, it leaves the 3 underneath. In the denominator, the square root of 25 is 5, and I no longer have a radical in that denominator. I didn't even have to rationalize because it was a perfect square. Number 14. In parentheses, I have x plus 6, close parentheses, squared, minus 9 equals 0. You start by adding 9 to move it to the other side. You cannot move the 6. That 6 inside the parentheses is part of what is being squared. So I have the part that is squared isolated. I now take the square root of both sides. When I take the square root on the left, it removes that exponent and leaves x plus six. On the right, when I take the square root, I have to remember that it could be positive or negative square root of nine. But the square root of nine is a perfect square of three. So we have a little more work to do. I still need x by itself, so I subtract 6. And I've told you that when you subtract it, whatever you move to the other side goes right smack dab up in front. But there is not a radical here. I can calculate and find the final two answers. And I will take off one point if you leave your answer like this instead of finding the two answers. Negative 6 plus 3 is 3 and negative 6 minus 3 is an x equals negative 9. All right, one more of these before we go on to completing the square and quadratic formula. Number 15, 4, then in parentheses, x minus 2, close parentheses squared, whoops, plus 20, equals zero. Four times in parentheses x minus two, close parentheses squared, plus 20 equals zero. Start by subtracting 20 on both sides. 
then divide by 4 to get the part that is squared by itself. Negative 20 divided by 4 is negative 5. Now we are ready to take the square root of both sides because what is squared is isolated. Taking the square root removes the square and leaves x minus 2 on the left. Taking the square root of a negative 5, I have to remember it could be both positive or negative when I take that square root. Can I leave that negative under the radical? Nope, it comes out as an i value. And I have to add that 2 and move it over, and it goes right in front. So it's 2, then plus or minus, i square roots of 5. And that is the only correct answer for that problem. All right. Next, we're going to solve by completing the square. One of them will have a coefficient on the squared term. One will not. You need to be able to do both. Solve the equation by completing the square. Number 16. x squared minus 10x plus 3 equals 0. When you complete the square, if we had had a coefficient, we would have divided by it. We don't have a coefficient. So we move 3 to the other side of the equation by subtracting it. So now you have a negative 3 over here. To complete the square, let me see if I can cover this up because I have it already written on there. To complete the square, I have to take half of this middle term and square it. Half of a negative 10 is a negative 5. And when you square a negative 5, negative 5 times a negative 5 is a positive 25. Again, if you square a negative 5 in your calculator without parentheses, it's going to tell you it's negative and you're going to be wrong. And if I add 25 on one side of the equation, I have to add it on the other. Now I write it as a binomial squared. What was squared first? x. What was squared last? Well, last we took half of that middle term, so it was a negative 5 that was squared. On the other side, negative 3 plus 25 is 22. Take the square root of both sides, remembering that it is positive or negative because we had an unknown value. It removes the radical on the left. The square root of 22, the factors are 2 and 11, so nothing can come out of the radical. And I move 5 to the other side by adding, and my final answer is x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 22. One more of these, then we go to quadratic formula. Number 17, 3x squared plus 18x plus 14 equals 0. Hopefully you remember to divide everything by 3. 3x squared divided by 3 leaves you x squared. 18x divided by 3 gives you 6x. 14 divided by 3 is 14 thirds. And move that 14 thirds to the other side of the equation by subtracting it. Now complete the square. You want to make the left side a perfect square trinomial. Half of the middle term is 3. And when you square 3, you get 9. If I add 9 on the left, I have to add 9 on the right. x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals a negative 14 thirds plus 9. 
on the left. That trinomial needs to be written as a binomial squared. What was squared to get x squared and x? What did we square to get 9? Well, we took half of the middle term, which was a positive 3. On the other side, and I'll go ahead and write this on here, we had to have a common denominator, so I had to multiply by 3 over 3 to get 27 thirds. And a negative 14 and a positive 27 leaves me with a positive 13 thirds. Okay, elementary school math right there. To get rid of the square, we take the square root of both sides. When I take the square root on the left, it removes the square, and it's plus or minus the square root of 13 thirds. Again, that is a fraction underneath the radical. So you have to rationalize that denominator by multiplying both numerator and denominator by the square root of 3. In my final answer, x will be by itself. I have to subtract 3 to move it to the other side, plus or minus, and when I simplify, square root of 13 times 3, square root of 3 is the square root of 39 over Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. Alright, now the quadratic formula, and then we'll finish up with the discriminant. We're doing 2 with the quadratic formula. I think you're probably good on these, because I know it was even taught in 8th grade math. And then algebra. You might have seen it in geometry. If you've done your homework, you should have it memorized by now. 18, the problem is 3x squared minus 5x plus 7 equals 0. Do the quadratic, oops, got that off to the side, sorry about that. 3x squared minus 5x plus 7 equals 0. So start putting it in your formula. X equals the opposite of the B value. Well, the B value is a negative 5, so it's a positive 5. Plus or minus the square root of I need to square that B value. I need to square a negative 5. The formula says minus 4 times the A value of 3 times the C value of 7 all over 2 times the A value, which is 3. Underneath that radical, negative 5 squared is 25. Negative 4 times 3 is a negative 12. Negative 12 times 7 is negative 84. And in the denominator, 2 times 3 is 6. <clears throat> Underneath that radical, 25 minus 84 is a negative 59. You can never leave a negative under a radical. That is an imaginary value. It's going to come out as I and give you a complex solution. 59 cannot factor. Your final answer is 5 plus or minus i square roots of 59 all over 6. All right, quadratic formula one more time before we go to discriminant. We have negative 3x squared plus 8x minus 7 equals 0. <clears throat> we have a coefficient again of, oops, sorry, I was doing a flashback to completing the square. On our quadratic formula, x equals negative b. Well, the b value is 8, so it is a negative 8. Plus or minus the square root of the b value squared, so I'm going to square an 8. Minus 4 
times the a value of negative 3, the c value of negative 7, and it is all divided by 2 times the a value, which is negative 3. Working under the radical, I have x equals a negative 8 plus or minus 8 squared is 64. Negative 4 times a negative 3 is a positive 12. 12 times a negative 7 is a negative 84 all over 2 times a negative 3, which is negative 6. <clears throat> Underneath that radical, 64 minus 84 is a negative 20. We need to simplify that radical. If I factor out 20, it's 4 times 5, and 4 is 2 times 2, so a 2 is going to come out. The negative comes out as an i value, and 5 remains under the radical. But we're not done yet. You can write these as two separate terms if you want. You could factor a negative 2 out, <clears throat> but a negative 8 over a negative 6 simplifies to be a positive 4 thirds. Positive or negative divided by negative is still positive or negative, and 2 and 6 have a common factor of 2, so it simplifies to be i square roots of 5 over 3. If you wrote that as 4 plus or minus i square roots 5 all over 3, that means the same thing. I tried to write it a different way just so you know that that's legitimate also. Alright, we're down to the last part where we talked about discriminant and the nature of the solutions. Remember, this is where we talked about if it had one, zero, uh, I'm sorry, one or two solutions, if they were real or uh, complex, and if they were real, were they rational or irrational? Okay, well, that's what we're doing here. We're going to work four problems because there's four possibilities. Number 22. You have been, oops, I'm missing an X there. There should be an X right there. X squared my, uh, plus 8X minus 7 equals 0. They want you to calculate what? What do you have to use to find the discriminant? B squared minus 4AC. It's not the entire quadratic formula, just this, and there is no radical involved. The B value is 8, and when I square 8, I get 64. Minus 4 is part of the formula, times the A value of 1, times the C value of negative 7. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Multiply by negative 7, you get 28. <coughs> add and you get 92. So tell me about the solutions. How many do you have? Two. Are they real or complex? Real because it's positive. Is it rational or irrational? Irrational because it's not a perfect square. If we did the entire quadratic formula, this would have been under the radical. You can probably simplify it some, but it is still irrational because you're going to have a radical in your answer. Okay, number 21. 3x squared minus 5x plus 2 equals 0. 3x squared minus 5x plus 2 equals 0. Find the discriminant. And you have to know the formula b squared minus 4ac. I'm not going to say use b squared minus 4ac to find the value. That's something you have to know. <clears throat> when I put in negative 5 and square it, I'll have 25 minus 4 times the a value, which is 3, times the c value, which is 2. 
negative 4 times 3 is a negative 12 times 2 is a negative 24 and when I solve the value of the discriminant is 1 <clears throat> what can you tell me about the solutions well it's a positive number so there's two solutions it is a perfect square so it's real and because it's a perfect square you have rational solutions if you were using the entire quadratic formula so two real rational okay number 22 4x squared plus 3x plus 1 equals 0 find the discriminant Find the value of the discriminant and tell me the nature of the solutions. Well, the B value is 3, so when you square it, you get 9, minus 4 times the A value, which is 4, times the C value, which is 1. 4 times 4 is 16, times 1 is still 16, and 9 minus 16 gives me... A negative 7. So what do you know about your solutions? Well there are two of them, but because it's negative you're going to have complex solutions. You have two complex conjugates is what the uh, answers are. They are exactly alike but with opposite signs. If you say two complex solutions, that's fine. If you say two complex conjugates, that's fine. Last problem of our review. Number 23. Negative 2x squared minus 12x minus 18 equals 0. Find the discriminant. <clears throat> The B value is negative 12. I'm going to square that first. Minus 4 times the A value, which is negative 2, times the C value, which is a negative 18. If I square negative 12, negative times a negative makes it a positive 144. 4 times negative 2, sorry, negative 4 times a negative 2 is positive 8. When I multiply that by a negative 18, I get a negative 144. And when I subtract, I get zero. So what does that tell me about the nature of my solutions? Well, if you think about the fact that this is what would have been under the radical after the plus or minus, adding and subtracting zero isn't gonna change anything. This is when you get one solution it will be a real number because there's no radical at all left. And so one real number is going to give you a rational solution since it doesn't have a radical. All right, that is your review. If you know how to do the problems on this review, you know how to successfully master your material on your test. If you don't know, you've got until the test to figure it out. All right. Y'all take care. Have a good day.